to the first meeting of the Wilmington Public Safety uh, Strategies Commission. We are here uh, because we all have a responsibility to address the challenges facing Wilmington, and we can only be successful if the leaders of the city, of Newcastle County, and of the state are working together to ensure that we take the most effective approach to fighting crime. And I very much appreciate the commitment of all of the members of the commission and the leadership of Lou Shalero and Joe Bryant to fulfill that mission. I want to thank the members of the General Assembly, uh, particularly with the leadership of the entire uh, city delegation because the General Assembly unanimously passed the resolution uh, that provides the framework for the commission's work. I want to thank Chris Kervick and the uh, Criminal Justice Council for their help tonight. Pretty much the entire office stayed late uh, to help out tonight, and we are grateful to them for all the work that they've done and all the work that they will continue to do. I also want to thank the hundreds of uh, Wilmingtonians, including members of the clergy, of other community groups, elected officials like Councilman Brown, who's sitting here, and the mayor and others who have taken an active role in working to stop the violence on our streets. Your efforts are vital, and we want you to be fully engaged in the work of the commission. Now, members of the commission and the outstanding consultant team will spend a lot of time over the next couple of months analyzing information about crime and public safety in Wilmington. But there is a reason that we created a public body with public meetings. And we know that the community's participation is absolutely vital to stop violence in the city, and we want to hear from members of the public, and we hope that many Wilmingtonians will participate in this process. The root causes of crime are many, and we as a state must be focused on all of the issues that impact ec economic opportunity and the security of our communities. But we also know that other cities that have been plagued by crime and plagued by violence have seen dramatic reductions in violent crime by finding and implementing the most effective public safety strategies for their communities. And if they can do it, so can Wilmington. So this commission has a very specific mission over the next two months. Under the resolution passed by the General Assembly, you're charged with conducting a rapid intensive and comprehensive examination of public safety strategies in the city of Wilmington. That includes examining which public safety strategies work and which do not work, not just here, but nationally and regionally as well. Your mission includes examining ways that we can better coordinate existing crime-fighting strategies, and it includes recommending actionable strategies that can be implemented quickly to stem the tide of violence. Your work should be thoughtful and diligent, but it must reflect the urgency of the situation. And I believe that we should be particularly optimistic that we can find solutions and the change is possible here in Wilmington. Just in recent days, local and national media have taken notice of a surge in housing development happening in the city part of an effort to attract a new generation of people to live and work and play here. More than $140 million is being invested because real estate developers are confident that the demand for high quality housing in Wilmington is high. Wilmington is a vibrant and diverse city of proud residents and strong neighborhoods and tremendous cultural assets, including a thriving arts community. Frankly, an arts community that is the envy of many bigger cities. It is some of the biggest banks and most respected law firms in the world that are here. And many companies are adding good paying jobs and attracting a high quality workforce, although we always have more to do. So to the members of the commission, I look forward to receiving your recommendations. And I look forward to working with all of you and everybody who loves this city to stop the unacceptable violence that is destroying lives and devastating families. And if it's possible to, vi to solve violent crime anywhere, it is absolutely possible to do so here in Wilmington. So with that, I'm going to turn this over uh, to the co-chairs. We, we have a, 
a really tremendous uh, commission sitting up here uh, next to me. Uh, very talented people who love Wilmington, who were absolutely committed to reducing, uh, to reducing the violent crime here in our city. I'm really grateful to all of you for your commitment and your willingness to spend so much time and effort on this over these next couple months. And what I know is that there are thousands of people in the neighborhoods of Wilmington who have very high expectations uh, for the work that is going to be done by this group. And I join them, most importantly, in saying thanks to all of you. Good afternoon. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, first of all, I, I'd like to just echo the governor's uh, statement in thanking the commission members for their uh, agreeing to serve on this commission. Um, you know, we, we are, I think, uh, as a group, uh, understanding that we all share in the issues that, that Wilmington is facing. Uh, the work that will be done by this commission is going to be done on behalf of the people of the city of Wilmington and, and the police officers that serve them. Um, we're going to talk a little bit today uh, from the consultants on, on their methodology and the organization and how they intend to go about it. Uh, but I think the, the first order of business is uh, the commission members will, by way of introduction, introduce themselves. Um, my name is uh, Lou Chalero and I am currently the uh, Secretary of the Delaware Department of Safety and Homeland Security. Good evening, everyone. My name is Joseph Bryant, Jr., and I presently serve as the Public Safety Director for Newcastle County Government. And I'm fortunate enough to sit on this commission as the uh, co-chair. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Bobby Cummings. I am the current Chief of Police for the City of Wilmington, <clears throat> and I'm looking for great things to come from this commission. Good evening. I'm Richard Gessner. I'm Vice President and Delaware Liaison for Capital One. Good evening. My name is James Wright. I'm retired from the Wilmington Department of Police, and I look forward with working with the uh, Commission. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Cassandra Marshall, and I'm the president of the Quaker Hill Neighborhood Association, uh, which is a part of West Center City, uh, ground zero of some of uh, the most difficult violence in the city. And I'm really looking forward um, to the work of this commission and figuring out a way to make Wilmington a healthier and happier place. My name is Drew Fennell. I work in the office of the governor as the deputy chief of staff, and I am the criminal justice policy advisor. Um, and I spent a long time uh, living and or working in the city of Wilmington uh, and look forward to working with all of you and with our great team of consultants to come up with some good workable solutions for our city. Can everyone hear me? Good evening, everyone. My name is Kathleen Jennings, and I am Attorney General Matt Denz, representative on this commission. I serve as the state prosecutor for the Delaware Department of Justice, and I, too, am looking forward to working on this commission with all of these fine people to find solutions and reduce crime in the city of Wilmington. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Daryl Chambers. I'm a longtime resident of the city of Wilmington. Currently, I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Delaware, working at the Center for Drug and Health Study. And like everyone here, it's an honor to serve at the pleasure of the governor. And I look and I expect and I anticipate great things coming from the uh, commission. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, you know, we're, we're here today to, to look at uh, policing in the city of Wilmington. You know, we all recognize that there are a lot of other issues that, that go into that, uh, certainly issues that we have a lot of good people that are working on them in, in terms of education um, and, and, you know, the home environment and, and all the other things that are part of this. Uh, but the charge from the resolution is to look at policing, uh, not only in the city, but as Joe and I will continue to remind everyone, uh, the county and the state also bear a uh, responsibility. So uh, one of the other issues is going to be is coordination uh, between county, the state, and, and certainly some of of our federal counterparts in helping to reduce the incidence of violence. Uh, I do say this, and I'll say it quite often, this is undertaken on behalf 
of not only the people of Wilmington, but the Wilmington Police Department, and to work with them, and that's what it will be uh, together in, in coming up with solutions um, on how we can affect the issue of violence in, in our city. Um, I, I do, want, once again, I, I am proud to serve on this commission. Uh, this is a commission, I think, made up of the right people, people that re, you know, re represent all aspects of the equation. And I think together, uh, we are gonna come up with uh, solutions uh, that I think are workable, uh, and not only is workable, but have, we have proven to work in other areas. Uh, so uh, before we get to the, to the heart of the issue, I'll ask Joe if he has opening comments. You know, the, the, the gold, our goal as a commission is to develop a comprehensive strategy to reduce violence in this city. And that's what we're gonna do. Um, again, the, the folks that are on this commission um, will do everything in our power to ensure that we come up with some great solutions, some ideal ways of addressing crime to help this chief. Um, this chief, um, Cummings, have done a great job since taking over some eight months ago. And all we can do as a committee is make it better for him to do and come up with solutions, ideas, thoughts, um, strategic plans to make it um, that this safe, that this city is safe again, like it used to be. Um, I, I applaud everyone who sits on this committee. Um, it's going to be a very tough 60 days, um, but I assure you, uh, we will get it done in fine fashion. So with that, I'll just turn it back over to Lou. Thanks, Joe. Uh, before we get started uh, with the formal program, any of the commission members have anything in opening? You guys want to say? Drew? Good. Okay. Um, the, the heart of the work really are going to be done by the consulting team that, that we have put together. We, we spent a lot of time and effort, and, and it is my belief that we have assembled probably some of the finest law enforcement professionals in the country to do this. Um, I think several things. One, it's important that we are going to begin with a clean slate. Uh, even though we may have our own ideas or thoughts, uh, this is a open a dialogue. This will be done uh, by people, I believe, that have a lot of experience in the area uh, from a host of different disciplines. Uh, but I think a coming together in beginning this to look at uh, the issues in Wilmington from a fresh perspective. Uh, I, that The other reason we went on the outside was to do that, um, to allow people to come in. Uh, we met with the chief this morning uh, and to work particularly with the Wilmington Police Department at first, and, and that is critical to this. Uh, it has to be a partnership. Uh, I, both Joe and I would love nothing better at the end of the process to have a consensus not only by the commission, but by the Wilmington Police Department and the men and women that serve on that police department, and, and certainly with the state police and the county to join in this. Uh, we can solve this, it is my belief, and, and we can do it together. Uh, but as I said, the, the heart of the work will be beginning today uh, will be done by the two teams of consultants that we have working together. Um, so I am going to ask them to, by way of introduction, to, to introduce themselves uh, and their backgrounds, and then we'll get into a, their presentation on methodology. So uh, Commissioner Safer. Good evening. Thank you, Secretary Shalero and members of the commission. Uh, my name is Howard Safer. I am the chairman and CEO of Vigilant Resources International, which is a consulting company that helps uh, police departments re-engineer and deal with issues. And of course, our primary issue here is to deal with violent crime and to help Chief Cummings reduce violent crime. Uh, we met with Chief Cummings today. He could not have been more gracious, more professional, more forthcoming and we believe that we are going to be able to help a very difficult problem. We're also partners with the Police Foundation in this effort, uh, equal partners. Uh, Jim Birch, who will talk to you shortly, uh, will explain what they're going to be doing. Our primary focus will be to reduce shootings, homicides, assaults, violent crime. Uh, I have put together a team that I believe is second to none in this area, and I'll introduce them each right now. Uh, first, uh, Jim McMahon. Uh, Jim was superintendent of the New York State Police uh, and did an amazing job in reducing crime throughout New York State. He was then deputy executive director of the International Association of Chiefs of Police, which is the largest police organization in the world. 
and introduced all kinds of new methodologies uh, to reduce crime. Uh, also with us is Sylvester Archery. Uh, Sylvester, who I've known for many years, uh, was chief in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, and for the last 20 or so years was the executive director of the Commission on Accreditation of Law Enforcement Agencies, which actually is the organization that creates standards for police departments, and Wilmington happens to be an accredited police department through CALEA. So he, uh, Sylvester uh, knows best practices, and what we will be doing in the next uh, month or so will be looking at everything that the department does and figuring out how we can help them. And we also have Frank Dwyer. Frank was a deputy inspector with the New York City Police Department. He ran one of the largest precincts in the department. He also was the chief of strategy uh, in helping me reduce crime. And when I was police commissioner, we reduced crime by 40% and homicides by 30%. Uh, we're hoping we will have similar success in helping Chief Cummings here. And last but not least, uh, my daughter, uh, Jennifer Safer, who for 17 years was a criminal investigator, special agent for the Federal Bureau of Investigation before joining our firm. And Jim, you want to introduce your team? Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. <clears throat> I'm Jim Birch. I'm uh, uh, Vice President of Strategic Initiatives at the Police Foundation. Uh, before I uh, tell you a little bit about my background and introduce the team from the Police Foundation, let me make sure we all have a shared understanding of who the Police Foundation is, because there are a lot of police foundations around the country. I happen to believe, uh, as I think you'll understand, that our Police Foundation is, is a very special one. Our Police Foundation is the National Police Foundation. It was founded about 45 years ago uh, through a, uh, a large grant from the Ford Foundation. We were created to be the nation's only nonprofit, nonpartisan, non-member organization dedicated to one mission, and that is improve policing through innovation and through science. So the Police Foundation is very different from many other organizations that operate uh, in this environment. I'm privileged to be a part of the team at the Police Foundation. I recently joined the Police Foundation after more than 20 years with the United States Department of Justice. Uh, most recently, I served as assistant director for the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, otherwise known as ATF. Uh, uh, spent time with them there, a variety of different things. But prior to that, I spent 19 years as deputy assistant attorney general and as acting director of the Bureau of Justice Assistance, which essentially is the Department of Justice's grant-making components. Um, it was 19 years of essentially traveling around the country doing exactly what we are doing here today in Wilmington because the purpose of all of the grants that are given by the Department of Justice is to improve those uh, criminal justice systems and the agencies that receive that funding. So uh, this is a process, that's a process that is very familiar to me and I hope that we can be as helpful here as we have been through some of the other uh, DOJ activities around the country. Uh, but this team uh, is a team that is not made by me, but by those who are here with me. I'd like to introduce my team members to you as well. Dr. Dave Thomas uh, is a uh, professor at uh, Florida Gulf Coast University. He is also a recovering police officer. He was a police officer in a number of different departments around the country, so he's got experience on the ground, uh, but he has also earned his PhD in doing a lot of research uh, in areas related to, to the topics that we're going to be addressing. We look forward to serving this commission uh, to the best of our capabilities. And before I turn the mic back over, I have to uh, concur with what the commissioner said about Chief Cummings. We met with him today. He could not have been more gracious, more open, more transparent, and more cooperative. And we look to do the same with you, Chief. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jim, and, and thank you, Howard. Uh, you know, I, I think everybody could agree, and, and Joe and I have been in this business for a long time. This is indeed an all-star team. Um, I think it's a team that's going to come in with a fresh outlook uh, and, and a team that certainly, by way of experience, ha has not only experienced great success, but also knows what it is 
to be behind the eight ball, and, and that's probably equally as important. Um, bear in mind that it's only been about a week since we formally engaged both groups, uh, so that we haven't had uh, a heck of a lot of time together. And today was for the first time formally meeting with uh, the Wilmington Police Department. But we did ask them uh, by way of uh, beginning the process to come here tonight and begin to talk about their process and methodology so that the commission members would understand where they're coming from um, and begin to develop a game plan as to how we're going to take this forward. Uh, the time frame, as, as Joe said, is short, uh, but you know that is what it is, and we're going to do everything in our power to make it happen. Uh, the purpose of these meetings, and, and Drew will talk about it a little bit, is to really engage the community on the issue of policing in the city of Wilmington, and, and that is going to be a product that will be incorporated uh, in the final recommendations. So uh, the, the goal of this is to make this as transparent as we possibly could. Uh, as we go along and hold these meetings, we'll get updates from, from the group as to where we are. Um, and we hope to have a, a draft of recommendations about a week before the deadline so that we can share that with the chief and, 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 and take it forward. I am convinced that you know together, uh, you know, we can look at this in, in a way that will engage everyone and, and will, at the end of the day, uh, come up with, uh, you know, hopefully some ideas and thoughts that are going to make it better. So, uh, Joe, anything before they begin? All right, so I'll turn it back over to Howard and, and Jim for their presentation. talked about the goal but I think you know it's worthwhile putting it up there for people to see and you know we're, we are basically going to develop a comprehensive strategy and we're going to do that with uh, our partners in the police foundation and certainly with our partners in the Wilmington Police Department uh, we're going to look at everything that they do and how they do it and this is not a situation about looking at things that are going wrong it's a, it's a plan about making sure there are things that can be done better so that we end up reducing crime and violence here. So this is our time frame. As uh, Secretary Shalero said, we have a very tight time frame here. We're going to uh, first, in the first two weeks, we're going to find out what, what we don't know. We need to take a deep dive into what the Wilmington Police do, how they do it, and in collaboration with them, uh, figure out where we can be helpful. Week three to four, we'll be doing an analysis of this, and then, of course, with data provided by the Police Foundation and their analysis, uh, we will be doing joint interviews, we will be doing ride-alongs, we will be basically uh, looking at everything that the uh, Wilmington PD does. And then in weeks four to six, we will get into actually putting together our analysis and making real recommendations so that this is not a report that sits on the shelf, but rather a strategic roadmap on how to reduce crime and violence in Wilmington. Okay, our methodology is, as I said before, we're gonna cut and analyze crime data. Uh, we're gonna review police department structure deployment, and deployment is very important. Uh, I'll be happy to answer a question when, when we're done. Uh, deployment is very important and uh, we are going to make sure that the resources are used to the best advantage for the purpose of reducing crime. Uh, as Secretary Shalero said before, there are many, many uh, things that impact on crime. Not all of them are effective policing, but that's not our purpose here. Our purpose here is first to reduce crime, stop the violence, and then hopefully deal with the other issues uh, as, as they go along. And Jim, you want to... Uh, come on. Okay, we're going to examine the strategies uh, in other jurisdictions uh, to make sure that um, what has worked in other places uh, could possibly be applied here. Uh, one of the things that I have found throughout my career is you don't have to reinvent the wheel if you find a successful strategy somewhere else. And whether it is a uh, community policing program, a ceasefire program, a youth program, whatever works, 
uh, we're going to take a look at, and if we can bring it here and make it effective in Wilmington, uh, that's exactly what we're going to do. And then, of course, we're going to obtain input from you, from the community and from business leaders, because one of the things that I have found is we cannot get this done uh, without community support. Uh, whether it is uh, community support in local programs or community support in making sure that criminals understand that, the, that they're the ones who are not going to be safe in this community. Uh, those are the kind of programs we're going to look at. Chip. Thank you, Commissioner, and um, I was uh, reminded to let everyone know that there will be a point in time in the agenda tonight where we'll have a uh, question and answer back and forth. Uh, just to reiterate what the Commissioner said, the work plan involves a number of different, very defined uh, tasks that will be completed by both teams, and the Commissioner went through a number of those, and we're going to be dividing those up based on the strengths of our teams. I apologize. And um, so uh, we'll be working on them all simultaneously because the timeline does not allow for a sequential uh, opportunity. So we're going to be doing them all at the same time, uh, which will be a challenge in terms of coordination to make sure that we're not asking the same people for the same information from two different places. And so we will coordinate very, very closely together as well as with uh, the Violence Reduction Network, or VRN, which Wilmington, I think, is fortunate to be a part of, a nationwide initiative that is designed to coordinate resources uh, in places like Wilmington and other places. So that we will make sure that we're not duplicating work that the Chief is already involved in with the Violence Reduction Network. And we've talked with those folks and coordinated very, very closely. As the Commissioner mentioned, uh, in addition to looking at uh, the crime data, in addition to looking at the de patrol deployment or staffing issues and the uh, department organizational issues, we'll also be looking at best practices in other jurisdictions. So we've talked today about what's happening in places like Camden, New Jersey, Baltimore, Maryland, and other jurisdictions. We particularly want to focus on places that look like Wilmington, not places that are four or five times the size of Wilmington. And we want to see what best practices have been implemented there, whether or not there is an evidentiary base for supporting those strategies here in Wilmington, and we'll be making recommendations along those lines. We'll also be looking at resource issues to the extent that we have uh, that kind of data. We'll be looking at what would it take to implement these strategies. Are there places where these resources can become available? Uh, and certainly from both of our teams, if we can be of assistance to Wilmington, any part of the city of Wilmington, and applying for uh, funding from any other source while we're involved in this process, we're happy to do that uh, without question. And then last, as the Commissioner mentioned, and this is the one that I want to emphasize most because my team is going to lead this particular task, is we think that we can't be successful uh, by any measure in supporting this Commission if we are not reaching out to the community, getting input from the community. And not just those formal established organizations that exist in many communities, but from the people who live the Wilmington experience every day. And so what we've been doing for the last several weeks is watching the news articles, reading uh, what's been happening, hearing from people through uh, those reports, and we've been identifying people that we want to talk to and get uh, benefit from their experience and what they know, and they will also recommend other people that we should talk to. Because there's often in places like uh, Wilmington and, and everywhere else, there's often multiple narratives about what's taking place in the city, and we want to make sure we hear all of those narratives. And Chief, you encouraged us to do that today, and we appreciate that as we go forward. So we will be putting a great emphasis on community engagement. Commissioner. So we are going to have a comprehensive strategy for violence reduction and what, they're all listed up there but what, basically what we're going to do is we're going to look at where police officers are deployed, how they're deployed, what they do when they're deployed, are they effective, how we can make them more effective and we're, we're going to also look at things like technology because technology can become a force multiplier and enable police officers to be more efficient and more effective and better in reducing crime. And that's pretty much what we're going to be doing. Uh, between these two groups, we have about 250 years of policing experience. Uh, we believe we have been very successful in what we've done, and we are very excited about coming to Wilmington and helping to reduce crime and violence. 
Thank you, Howard and Jim. Uh, at, at this time, I'd like to open it up to the commission members, uh, bearing in mind that uh, both groups will be working on your behalf. Uh, so I think it's important that if you have questions or uh, comments that you'd like to make to them, uh, now is the time. So, anyone? I'll just say quickly, I think a couple points that they made that, uh, that I think are extremely important. One of which is the involvement of the community. We're not gonna be successful if we can't get the folks from this city and the surrounding communities um, to come out, ask questions, and take part in this process. I think that's extremely important. So I encourage everyone here that when you leave, and we have four other meetings, I believe, um, on the agenda for the next, over the next, uh, next uh, two months, encourage people to come out, and come and talk and, t and take part in this, this conversation. At the end of the day, it's about those who live in this city and those who work in this city and those who visit this city. Um, so I just encourage it. I think it's a great idea that we, in, we, we reach out to as many people throughout this, this area as we possibly can. When it comes to crime, and my chief always says this, there is no, there is no wall. There is nothing stopping crime from going from one community to the other, um, to one section of the county and, and the other. So we have, to, we have to work collectively and do whatever we can to, to um, address these issues. Again, good evening, everyone. Um, I think what you will hear over and over uh, throughout this commission and those working um, from the consultants is that there has to be engagement. We all have to engage in the solutions. Um, without the engagement, we will continue to do things the same way we've always done them. Another piece of this is that you have to be open for change. And change is what we're looking for to occur out of this commission, uh, from the consultants that are looking at our police department. We are totally open to this process and we're willing to assist in any way that we can. And I will say again that we encourage uh, the community to, to be involved in this process. I have a uh, question. Uh, everyone's mentioned the need for community input and we know that is extremely vital to the success of our endeavor. Will there be a mechanism for those individuals who are not comfortable standing up in a public group like this to um, be able to contact the commission so that their voice can be heard? Yes, ma'am. Um, as was mentioned, I'm a recovery officer for 20 years. So, um, and I had a chief that his objective, I was on a specialty unit. I hated him for doing this, but it was the smartest thing he ever did. He made us go and knock on doors in the neighborhoods that were most deeply affected with crime to advise them so the people would understand exactly what we were doing. Um, and we went and did surveys from door to door, and we actually met the people for the first time. Um, my goal, and, and as we met as a group, as both group met, met this afternoon, what we talked about is I'm going to come back and I want to go I wanna meet with the ministers. I know there's a ministerial alliance. I would like to go to the churches because I know that that's one of the places that we, that we need to have access. But we also need to have support from that group in order to give us permission basically to go in and, and to ask the surveys. I'll do the surveys right there. I'll bring them with me and do the surveys there. The other thing that I want to do is we'd also would like to meet with the, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, do the surveys with that group, because then we can collect data and find out what they feel they need, and then we can take that information and give it back to the police department. So I think that's the one avenue that I know, and I know a lot of people aren't coming here. I know a lot of people won't be comfortable in talking to me um, someplace else, because I'm not from here. And I would be viewed as, you know, I'm a member of law so the way to break that is to use other avenues to open the door for us, and that's what we plan to do. Thank you. I also have a um, question for you. 
Recently, there's been a, uh, a lot of conversations in the local churches, and I want to know whether there's going to be a mechanism out there that's going to reach out to all the local churches, and um, especially um, the group IMAC in the city of Wilmington. Commissioner, we're, we are happy to talk with you about that. I think as uh, Dr. Thomas mentioned, you know, one of our goals, resources, uh, obviously within the resources that we have and the, that being time particularly, uh, is to get out and talk to some of the congregations. Um, and so we'd like to talk with you and anyone else about where we should go. Uh, that's obviously based on a number of factors, but we want to plan that out. The other thing we want to do is talk to a number of, of informal groups that may have been established in the community. And so we know recent uh, newspaper articles mentioned, for example, uh, groups like Churches Take a Corner, uh, Complexities of Color, or organizations that have recently been created, grassroots movements from within the community. We'd like to talk to those groups as well as the congregations and the business community. Thank you. Hi. Um, I want to ask, uh, while we're talking about additional stakeholders, um, one, I think, important group to try to touch base with would be the neighborhood planning councils, um, which are, you know, basically, you know, a super neighborhood group representatives of uh, all the neighborhood groups are represented on each one of them. I don't know that you would have time to get to all of them for this particular round of study, but um, some of them will be meeting and it would be important, I think, to touch base with them. Question, is there a plan for the consultants to meet with other law enforcement agencies um, in this county, in this state? Yes, uh, we intend to meet with uh, all of the relevant law enforcement agencies in the county, in the state, with uh, other, other adjacent departments, with state police, with all of the law enforcement agencies uh, that would have an, any effect or impact here, sure. Okay, we do um, have a section devoted towards public comment, and, and we'll, we'll certainly get to that. But before we do that, I'm going to turn it over to Drew Fennell, who has um, been instrumental in arranging and setting the agenda for the next meetings, and, and we'll go through that. Drew. Thanks so much. Uh, and I want to thank our co-chairs and commission members again um, on behalf of our office. It's a lot to ask of you um, and of the community, and again, to thank Chief Cummings for uh, in, in opening his doors uh, to everyone here. Um, so we've been working on a number of uh, items that we want to make sure are addressed in the agendas in the public. So I want to just also uh, add an answer to your uh, question about how to get people in who, wanted to, who may want to speak in a, in a less public sphere. If you will email the Criminal Justice Council helpline, it's right on there, it's CJC. Delaware.gov, right on their help page. You can, that's confidential. Um, if you want to send an email to that line, we will make sure that that information gets from the Criminal Justice Council to the appropriate person on the consultant team um, so that they can have a private conversation with you. Um, because even those small group uh, settings may not be a place where everyone is comfortable uh, telling their own story. And we are certainly happy uh, to try to facilitate a, an, a meeting with you if that seems to be something that would be helpful to the to the consultants. Uh, recognizing, of course, that time is ticking and, and we don't have uh, immense numbers of opportunities to meet with people, we do want to make sure that everyone uh, is comfortable uh, and able to step forward. Um, as we said, there, there's uh, one of the most important things we're trying to do here is, uh, is really uh, a very fast sprint toward an actionable plan, and a huge piece of that is sort of knowledge transfer, right? We've got to get to know more about ourselves as a city um, and more about one another. Um, so we're going to try to do that in a couple of different ways. One way is to look at these meetings as an opportunity uh, both for the consulting groups uh, to share with you the work that we're doing between meetings and also to 
provide an opportunity for you in the community to speak to us and let us know what you would like to be considered and what's important to you. Um, so uh, in light of that, we're going to have, at each of the meetings, we'll have a progress report from our two consultant teams and, and as they work together uh, to do the work we need to do. Um, and we will also have a couple of presentations by them um, of some information that we may not all be uh, as familiar with. I am not a law enforcement professional, so I always get a lot out of these. Um, one of them will be on crime mapping and crime data and sort of how that's generated, how that's used, and sort of what it looks like here in the city of Wilmington. Because I think those visual data representations are really very helpful for people in beginning to conceptualize sort of what the work looks like, uh, as well as sort of what it sounds like, right? Um, a second uh, presentation will be about uh, sort of along the lines that, that uh, uh, both Jim and Howard talked about, which is that best practices, sort of what do we know that's out there that's working elsewhere, that's sort of a menu for us to choose from so that we can begin uh, before the final draft of the, of the proposal to think about things that might be appropriate for us and have a chance to let them sink in a little bit. Um, and figure out the best ways to apply them here. Um, and then for the next three meetings, we're gonna have sort of a theme for those meetings. So one of those meetings will be about law enforcement resources that are here in the city of Wilmington. So we'll wanna talk about um, and hear from Wilmington Police Department, um, from our federal partners at uh, DEA, the HIDA that someone uh, mentioned earlier, uh, the Violence Reduction Network, ATF, others that are active here in Wilmington, as well as sister agencies uh, in the county and the state um, to sort of see, because there's a lot I think that the community is not always aware of, um, and sometimes we're not even aware of each other, um, that it's been going on very cooperatively to try to, to, try to sort of figure out what's, what's going on. Um, then there'll be uh, another evening which will be devoted to sort of what community assets support public safety, and that'll be an opportunity for um, public safety organizations, and I'm thinking here about community-based safety organizations um, like neighborhood watches, peacekeepers, other kinds of groups out in the city. You guys can think of lots of them as well. The faith community, as, as Jim brought up, uh, neighborhood organizations, Cassandra, service providers, advocacy groups, and there are a couple of state agencies, including the, the Attorney General's office, that are doing some really creative, uh, sort of on the ground, community-based activities that I think it's worth learning more about and hearing more about. Um, and then we'll also have an opportunity at a third meeting to hear um, from our business community and talk about uh, public safety in Wilmington employers. Um, we'll want to look at downtown visions and the central business district, um, some business organizations, a couple of already been uh, mentioned tonight, um, and hear both from our major employers and small businesses inside the community. Um, so I hope that those kinds of things will be, uh, will be easy for us to sort of chunk in that way, and I hope that as you plan on attending or inviting others to attend uh, or make public comments yourself, that you'll know that there's an opportunity to really have each of these meetings focused on a pretty specific topic um, for that piece. Uh, I want to do uh, quickly uh, two things. One is to uh, recognize that we have some elected officials and their representatives in the audience. I see Representative Keeley entered after we uh, started, and I also see um, some folks from Senator Kuhn's office and from Representative Carney's office so thank you for being here as well. Um, so we have an opportunity for public comment. I know a couple of people have signed up for that already. Um, Chris, is, is there if anybody, as the public comment is going on, if you'd like to, to step forward, um, please feel free to do so. Just uh, sign up over there uh, if you are so moved. Um, I think we have enough time uh, tonight to hear from you. Uh, you know, as long as you find your comments to the to the topic at hand, I think we'll uh, we'll be good to go. Thanks, Drew. Um, as 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 has been mentioned, and certainly Joe mentioned it. The, the the public input to this is just critical to the outcome. Uh, it's tough. It's a tough time for him to work, and I, I think I talked to Jim last week, and sometimes these things take upwards of a year to do, and we're going to try to compress that in 60 days. But that doesn't negate the fact that it has to be thorough, and it has to be complete, and it has to be based on good information. Uh, the outcome is only going to be as good as the input that we put into it. So uh, we can, and I know Joe agrees, we'll do our very best to be sure 
that that happens. Uh, so uh, I, I think that that is going to be uh, one of the big issues that we're going to face is the time. But the second issue, and, and I think this is going to be tough, um, as we said, that there are so many factors that go into this. Uh, the charge from the resolution is to, to, is to look at policing. Uh, so as best we could, we will try to limit that to the policing issue of Wilmington, even though there very well may be some much more critical things that need to be discussed. And, and certainly we're not going to limit it to that, but you know, our charge is to develop uh, a police recommendation. So uh, with that, unless the members have any other comment, we, we will turn it over to Chris for Thank you, Mr. Secretary. There's a few people signed up. Um, Beverly White. This whole task force is so beautiful. I sit here and I look at the gentlemen dressed in their shirts and ties and the suits and everyone out there looks so nice and we're so articulate. But my name is Beverly White and I grew up in the state of Delaware in Wilmington. I went through the Wilmington Public Schools. I graduated from Delaware State University. I have a degree in art education, also a master's degree. And I'm looking, and I've, my daughter has purchased a brownstone in the city. My son owns a business in the city, and I live in the suburbs. And I'm telling you right now, I have been through some things that have happened in the city. My daughter has had her place defected all over her front. And the lady who came, and the police department, I have to commend them. They came out as soon as they were called. And I'm telling you, we have a nice police force here. However, we're not getting the help that they need and we need in the community. And what am I saying? I'm saying that the criminals, the people who cause the chaos in this city are not in church. You're not going to get that. And when you knock on the doors, they're not going to answer you because they're considered snitch. Okay? And if you're a snitch, you're going to get killed. So they're not going to answer you. They're not going to talk to you. You need to get somebody on your committee, like me, for an example, and I will volunteer my time because I am tired of what I've seen and I'm tired of going through the courts. If you go down to report the scene, I saw the child have bleach thrown in her eyes in the city. I came down to the police department on 4th Street to report that. I parked over in a parking lot where there were apartments. I didn't see a sign. I left my car there to come in. They told me if I came down and wrote a report, it wouldn't take that long. It took me one hour by the time I was seen. And by the time I got out, my car was towed. And I had to pay over a hundred and some dollars to get my car back in that day in cash. So you don't make it very easy for the citizens of this community to come even to your police station to report anything. And when we call you, they don't have enough time. You don't have enough police officers even if you hire all of those that you had on that screen. You don't have enough to cover every door, every block in this city. And you need to start with respect. I, I commend these men. They came dressed in respect. You got to have these people. I'm tired of looking at people, uh, students walking around, young men who dropped out of school and I'm looking at their underpants walking down. I don't know how they could even run if they're a criminal. Walking down and I got to see underpants. I think it's the disrespect. People throw trash on the street. If you tell them to pick it up, years ago you, would, you had a fine. You were a litter bug, you paid $500 fine. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have the disrespect. Start with respect. In the schools, they are not respecting the teachers. And I taught for 34 years and I left this state and went to New Jersey, which happened to be a better system. Why did I leave here? I was kicked. You think I had support from the administrators? No. They want to make it look like it's your fault. It's not the teacher's fault. It's got to start in the home. And those children that are causing all this chaos, they don't go to church. They go to school and terrorize the other children in school. That's why the parents have taken their children out and put them in charter schools. I have a granddaughter that's in a charter school now. What did they tell me? At five years old, I know that she could read. They tell me she's got to wait another year because she was born September the 17th, okay? I put her in a charter school. She's academically gifted. She's in first grade now. Last year, she read over 1,200 books. This year, 500 and something, and she's a first grader. And any child, I don't care what environment they come from, uh, they can be educated. They can be smart if you put them in the right environment. But a child cannot get on that bus and ter be terrorized by other children 
whose parents don't care. They're outside playing all night long. These officers don't have time for that. Call them. They'll tell you, we got drug dealers we got to deal with. We don't have time for this. And they're true. They'll tell the truth. They don't, but it starts there. You first start with respect. And if you don't make these people start being fine for littering, fine for wearing their pants down to their knees, all of that kind of stuff has got to start there. And if you think that all these gentlemen that just came into town are going to be paid very big bucks to make, put some stuff on paper, it's going to look good, yes, but we'll see if it works. And if you need me, please call me. I will work on your committee. Kevin Malloy. Hi, I'm Kevin Malloy. I'm a Wilmington, Delaware native. And I just wanted to um, see if you're going to be looking into uh, this public safety to include um, some initiatives um, such as we had last summer, Better Block, which was changing some traffic patterns, adding bike lanes adding diagonal parking on the one way, the wide one way streets that we don't need two lanes of traffic, just need one lane, a bike lane, and diagonal parking. It would bring more people out, therefore I think would increase you know, public safety. So I wanted to, to see if that's going to be an, something to be looked into. And also I see something is sort of missing here in this audience and no one's brought up and more um, youth involved to respect the youth so that they can have, you know, learn self-respect. So in order to, this committee to be um, effective, I think, should include, include more youth. That's. Thank you. Pauline Addison. I'm glad to see this commission get started. Um, I also want to say that none of us here are the Messiah, so we don't have a perfect plan. But Wilmington has problems. But I've been a Delawarean and a Wilmington Tonian most of my life. I love Wilmington, and I want to help fix it. So yes, we have problems, but we have to have something that's tailored to Wilmington. And I hear a lot of times people say that, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and we're going to take this from take this from there. We're not Philadelphia or any of those places. So make sure that when you tailor something, you do really include grassroots people. A lot of us know what's going on. I'm not going to move nowhere. It's my home. You know, and I'm not going to be pushed out by the little people in the corner or whatever. If that's what you're doing and it's affecting me, you're going to jail. But I don't want to see uh, people come in our community by zip code and everybody's a criminal because we're not all criminals. And that happens a lot, like, you know, such and such an area, that's where it, no. Everybody's not a criminal. There are a lot of factors, and I know your piece is the policing of it. Yes, we need policing or, or things will go chaos, but please consider the fact that we'll save, we'll raise money for the Blue Falcon, the Pink Panther, and all that, but nobody has yet invested in doing something to bring up humanity. And now that we're doing that, and this seems like something that might be going that way, I'm in. You know, but let's just do it where we're not coming out and just, you know, you got the majority of police here in Wilmington truly are good policemen. But you got idiots just like you got some people out here that are criminals. Tailor those people. Get them together. If they want to do the job, they want to do the job. You know? Otherwise, they don't need to be involved in it, just like some of the people. Thank you. Dwight Davis. Pretty good, thank you. Yes, uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Dwight L. Davis. I'm the president of the Motivational Center Incorporated. I was born in the city of Wilmington educated in Wilmington Public Schools. Matter of fact, part of my education was right here at this Y that we called the Black Y. I graduated from Delaware State College and for the last almost 40 years, I've been the president actively of the Model Cities Motivational Center. 
I've been to a, and participated in a lot of strategic plans. They're all fine until it's time to implement. And when it's time to implement and the money shows up, it's the same old vendors that continue to receive the contracts to implement or not implement or to continue to get paid for non-performance. The problem concerning the city of Wilmington and the state of Delaware is structural. It's insidious and it's structural. It's a manufactured crisis. What you see in the streets of Wilmington is, are not there by coincidence. They're there because they are the result, not the cause. The young men standing on the corners of the city of Wilmington were not responsible for the mortgage foreclosure failure. They weren't responsible for the Wilmington Trust being defrauded and eventually taken over. They're not responsible for the export of jobs overseas. The problem that you're attempting to address is a problem that speaks to a moral and spiritual decay of our system of governance. The reason that you see what you see is because individuals in shirts and ties that occupy elected, appointed, and political positions look the other way when fraud and corruption takes place in government institutions. That is the reason that you see a failure on the part of our children to get a good education. There were three things that slavery did that was different than any other slavery that ever existed in the world that happened to our people. Number one was that it was against the law for us to learn how to read. Now, people may think that we should just get over 400 years of, of not being permitted to learn how to read. Second, we were the only form of slavery where the slaves were dehumanized. We were treated as non-human beings. And third, we were in fact the first international commodity traded all over the world. Now you may think that that shouldn't impact what's taking place today, but I'll say this to you. We are locked at the hip. The African Americans are locked at the hip to the success or failure of this country. And if we're not successful, this country is not going to be successful. From the courts, the Chancery Court, that in this city, we've been fighting a case in the Delaware Court of Chancery for 12 years, where over $5 million was taken from our neighborhoods. And everyone that we've attempted to address has looked the other way. Your judicial, your government, has, have all put a sign out in front of those for sale. So from arrest to conviction, I take my hat off to law enforcement. And the reason that I do is because they are the ones that are on the front line that have to meet us in the neighborhoods. They have to meet the young men and women on the corners in the neighborhoods. But the people that are making decisions, the people that are letting the contracts for non-performance, those are the individuals that are responsible for the moral, spiritual decline of our government, of our country. I love this government. 
I love my city, but I feel so bad. It hurts my heart to see so many of young men unemployed, uneducated, drugs. It hurts my heart to see us being destroyed, and you say that we're destroying ourselves. I respect Governor Markell very much, but the educational committee that he put together that recently produced a preliminary report doesn't even begin to address what's necessary for us to increase the performance of our children. It was a cut and paste of all the other reports. The individuals on that committee were all vendors. And I say this to my Christian community, the churches. Our churches have become vendors. They're not preaching the word of God. They are only participating in becoming vendors for contracts. So they can't even look the people in their face. So I'm ready to work with whoever's ready to work with me. But if you're not ready to work at the level that I'm presently working on, and we've all, and I'll end it on this. We've already petitioned the Delaware General Assembly to impeach and remove a vice chancellor of the Delaware Court of Chancery for violations of judicial conduct that is connected directly to what's taking place in our community. So I thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak, and I trust that we'll be able to work together in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Natasha, Natasha Ricks. Hi, I'm a little bit nervous, so just bear with me. But my name is Natasha Ricks. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. Um, I grew up in this neighborhood, right down the street on Ninth and Pine. Um, family has been destroyed by the violence that's been going on in our city. That's why I'm here today. I also agree with you and other gentlemen. The problem that we have right now is this room is filled up with the wrong people. The people that need to be here to listen to what you guys want to do to help are not here to hear that. When I found out about a meeting over the last five days, I can go in all the neighborhoods. I know some of the police officers that's here right now. And I actually talked to the youth that's going through what they're going through right now. And I asked them, I was like, what could we do to make things better for you? The number one thing every single last one of them said was a job. Once you get arrested in Delaware, you get a record. It's almost impossible to get a job afterwards. So it's kind of like we setting these kids up for failure. The jobs are going. When I grew up, we came here for free. We had summer youth. We had so many different outlets and programs to help us along the way. We had rec centers. All that stuff is going or it costs money. So now our kids are just out in the street doing what they do. Kids right now, you want to know why they're getting killed? Because they're robbing people. And the people that they're robbing are coming back killing them. And it's a, it's a cycle that's going to keep going on and on and on until we fix that problem. The problem right now is money. The second problem is support. I'm 20. My oldest son is 23 years old. I'm 38. We're dealing with a generation of kids who had kids. So we had kids raising kids. We all grew up together. We had no direction. Nobody knows what to do. So then everything is screwed up. So jobs is number one. Number two is support. And I don't know where that support's going to come from because there's so many homes that's broken. I got kids that's out in the street doing bad things. I don't even know how to help them. That's why I'm here to see if I can work with y'all so y'all can work with us. But I'm gonna tell you right now, the people that you need to help, they're not gonna talk to anyone in this room. I promise you that. They will not talk to you. They don't know you. They're not gonna trust you. You don't even understand where they're coming from or what they've been through. Our kids are suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome. They see dead people in the street on a normal and like is a normal thing they don't even cry anymore at funerals and nobody in this room really understands that unless you experience that I've been through three funerals over the last three months and 
little babies. Y'all don't understand that because you never had to live that life. But I am a witness that we can be resilient and we can overcome some things because I did some bad stuff in my background. I went back to school, I got my degree, and now I have a career paying job with benefits working for Hatson Bueller as a system administrator working over their safety department. So I keep our people and our company safe. If I can keep them safe, I can help keep the kids in Wilmington safe and I need you guys help. So I hope that you guys reach out to us so we can reach out to you, we can all work together. But this room looking like this, this isn't going to fix our problem. And you sitting up there saying about policing, that means that you're going to just keep locking up all these kids. These kids go to jail, especially over 18. They're not required to get an education, which is crazy. So you're sitting them back into society, uneducated, with the background, so they can't get jobs. What do you think is going to keep happening? When they start at the age of elementary school, so, give them a felony, give them a father, he wants to get to his wife. I know. Then the child sees that, he goes to school, and he might do that to a young girl in kindergarten. But if so, then the police are called, and that child is given a felony, he's taken to jail, they destroy the whole family, and they make something big out of it. These things have to change. The laws have to change. You cannot decide with the group over here, and everybody over here, and everything's on black and white on a piece of paper. Can it's I, a felony that, me. A, that a child cannot Can go I to college. <laughs> You're fine. I just wanted to finish up. I'm just, I'm just letting you guys know that I am here, and I've reached out to people that's in the community that you guys might not want to work with. They might have backgrounds, but these are the people that are in the community that can actually help you. And I, the next meeting, I will bring them all here with me so that we can all work together. But that's where it's going to start at. And I'm not trying to discredit it anybody's education or anybody's experience, I live here. I was raised here. I know what will work and what won't work. And us sitting in this room trying to come up with a solution isn't going to work. Obviously, this is a very important issue. And, and okay. in the meetings that myself and the other colleagues from the Wilmington delegation that have had with the governor uh, has transpired in, into this commission, I think just very quickly, if I can make one suggestion to the consultants, uh, I think you've heard very loudly and clearly that a lot of people want to share information with you and at the next meetings that we have, if we can take them into the neighborhoods because I know a lot of people just don't have the transportation to get from one side of town to the other and um, I think you'll have the ability to get a variety of different points of view if you take meetings, kind of a tour around the city. Um, secondly, the comments that, that were made tonight are right absolutely at the heart of the issue, uh, and, and they will not be denied. I, I, I need to for everybody to understand that. I, I think, and uh, for the two chairs of the committee, I think we have two separate issues here. I think we have an immediate need about the deployment of the Wilmington Police Department, and then we have the social issues that we still have to tackle. And I know one of the, when we were talking with the governor, the original deadline was many, many months out. However, um, and I'm sorry, I think I was the one who pushed it up, so I apologize for that, but we know the reality that March 31st is spring, and we know that it, it gets very intense as soon as the weather starts to turn nice. And we needed something almost immediate regarding deployment. But uh, this commission, maybe not these consultants, but this commission, I believe the intent is for them to still continue to meet to talk about jobs, social issues, the respect, opportunities for urban youth. and. Again, I just want to thank the consultants for being here. I want to thank the public for being here and the commission for, for taking and volunteering your time to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Keeley. There, there are two other people we'd like to hear from, uh, one of which uh, I've had the privilege of working with in the past, and that is Councilman Mike Brown, who also chairs the Public Safety Commission, a big proponent of, of the people for the city of Wilmington. So, <coughs> Councilman Brown. Thank you very much, and to, good evening to everyone. And, it has been said already, but thank all of you for 
being here and taking a part of, out of your life, uh, your family life, uh, and to come and want to help and assist us here at Wilmington. I sit as the public safety chair for the city of Wilmington, city council, and I stand and offer you any assistance that I could give through city council. Uh, be advised that, uh, and, and I hope you take advantage of it, we, we have a, a, a local television uh, that you could put out information on and come and talk to those uh, viewers of, throughout the city of Wilmington. Uh, someone mentioned about the eight, uh, the councilmatic, there's eight councilmatic districts. And I believe that if you want to gather information all at once, uh, that that could be arranged through all eight council members and then the four at large that could welcome you in, possibly into our chambers, uh, and have all of the community leaders, civic association leaders, all there. I'm a, com I, you know, I, I argue the point that you have a group over on the north side and a group on the west side and a group on the, on the, on, on the other side of town, and no one is talking to one another. Uh, we hurt each other by doing that. Everybody thinks that their ideas are, are better than the next person. Somebody mentioned about the ministers. While I, uh, I am a Christian, and I believe that the pastors who stand behind that sacred desk are there to save souls and to talk about how they can save the souls. But it's up to us, it's up to us to call them together. This young lady said she'd help to bring other young folks. I have a, I have a, a strong lead in, in gathering people. And if you need my help, I would do that. And take, I ask you to take advantage of all the council members because I was, I'm understanding that they're all willing to sit down listen to you, share, and help. And I would turn it over, but I'm glad that you're here. Uh, there's much more I can say, but let us all come under one umbrella. Let us all sit at the same table so we can do the final finish, so we'll be able to help my friend, the Chief of Police.